So to start, what I would like to do is just a fun little thing. We did this before, but um, these are some electron microscope images. <coughs> See if you can guess what some of these things are. Raise your hand if you want to take a guess at this. So obviously it's magnified quite a bit. Maybe a fish scale? Good idea. See the sort of iridescent rainbow sort of color? It's actually a CD, the back of a CD. You know the part where the information is encoded on those rings. What about the... Raise your hand if you want to take a guess at this one. And these are all magnified. Yes. I will not be using this object this month. A razor. It's a razor. It's a razor, and these are like arrows. It is not s'more cereal. It one of these is a rock, but it's a rock that you eat. objective lens, the total magnification would be 300 x. That means the object you're seeing in the eyepiece is 300 times larger than its actual size. Now as we are using these microscopes, um, you need to be careful how you carry it. They're expensive. They're several hundred dollars each. 
Also, they're delicate in that if you smash on things, they get out of alignment and then it's hard to see things, it's hard to focus. So you always want to carry two hands. One hand on the arm, one hand on the base. but sometimes people don't follow the proper steps and have a hard time seeing things. So I'm just going to walk you through exactly how we use the microscope. First and most important thing, we always start on low power. The shortest objective, it's red, it's 4x on our microscopes. We always begin on low power. Okay. We always are looking at something that's mounted on a slide, a piece of glass like this. You put the slide on the stage, clip it in, and then you need to make sure that it's centered. Okay? There's a little circle on here, you see the light shining through. Obviously the part you want to look at needs to be right in that light. Once you have the slide on there, then you look through the microscope, through the eyepiece, and as you do so, you focus it. Because right now, I see nothing. Even though the insect that's on the slide is right in the middle, I see nothing. So you look through there, and then you turn this course adjustment knob until things get in focus. There you go. And, and now I can see something. So this course adjustment is how we adjust the focus um, under low power. Um, so you had, like, you were looking at the same thing, but you had a different record. Yes, they all do. And different microscopes have different ways of focusing. Like some have the coarse and fine adjustment combined into one knob that has two parts you turn. Um, so there is some variation. Different microscopes have different objective lenses. They aren't all like ours. So yeah, it does vary somewhat. Once you have it under low power, and you want to see it closer under medium power, you have to be sure, first of all, that it's in focus and center. Because when you switch to medium power, you like zoom in right on the middle of your field of view. So if like the object is, if this object we're looking at was way over here, when you zoom in, you wouldn't see anything. So you make sure it's in focus, you make sure it's centered, and then you can switch to medium power. Okay, medium power on our microscopes is the yellow ring. It's a 10x objective. It's much longer than the low power objective. When you have it in focus under low power, when you switch to medium, it should be really close, like almost in focus. This one is just needs a little slight adjustment. So again, you make sure it's in focus. You maybe move the slide around if you need to see some other part of the specimen. Okay, there you go. It has to be perfect, then you can move on to high power. Okay? So it's in focus, it's centered. My last step, I switch to high power. Just see high power objective, it has a blue ring. It's the longest one. It's almost touching the slide at this point. Okay, it's really close. But when I look through here, this is not quite in focus, but it's close. Um, you switch to high power, and then when you focus, because it only needs a tiny amount of adjustment, you use the fine adjustment knob. You never use this coarse adjustment knob when you have the high power objective in it. You just want to use the fine adjustment. It'll make some slight changes until it's in focus, and then you'll be able to see the object. Okay? If you use the coarse adjustment, you could smash the objective lens into the slide and break things. Obviously, that's not good. So under high power, you only use the fine adjustment. Um, and if you can't see, you go back to medium, find it, center it, focus it, and then you go back to high power. So <clears throat> when you use a new slide, you start back at low power again. So 
The other thing, when you look in our microscope, you see a little, it looks like a needle in there. That's the pointer. And as you rotate this eyepiece, it rotates around. You can use it to like point something out to somebody. Like if you want to point at a certain cell, you might move it so the pointer's touching and tell your partner, oh, look right where the pointer is. What is this cell here? So, um, I don't think you have a slide. So the field of view is the circle you see when you look in a microscope. And your field of view changes as you change the magnification. As you zoom in, what happens to the area you see? Does it get bigger? If I use a higher power, how much of it do I see? I see less because I'm zooming in. And then I zoom in more, I see even less. Okay? So as we increase our magnification, our field of view decreases. This picture sort of represents that. Here's a paramecium. Under low power, this is what I would see, all of it. Here you can see the pointer. If I switch to medium power and zoom in, I'm only going to see about that much of this object. And then if I switch to high power, I'd only see this one. As we increase our, our magnification, we decrease our field of view. For our microscopes, these are the objective lenses we have. We have 4 or 10 and a 40x, low, medium, and high power. Our eyepieces are all 10x. So that means, what's our mag total magnification when we are using low power? 40. How about medium? 100. 100. And high power is 400. So which power would give us the largest field of view? Low power. And high power gives us the smallest field of view. So as we increase our magnification, we decrease our field of view. So, 
the last thing we need to talk about is how we measure things with the microscope, because that's something you're going to have to do in our lab today. So we know that our field of view is this area we see in the microscope. And it has a certain diameter. And it's something that we can measure. Now, when we're looking at objects in the microscope, often we'll use a different unit of measurement another metric unit that we have not talked about. It's a metric unit used for small objects. Does anyone know a metric unit used for very small objects? Have you ever heard of a nanometer? It's not that small. This is something else. One of those things. <laughs> One of those things. Yeah. Um, I, I'm not sure. Close. But thanks for trying. Um, it's actually called a micrometer. It has this abbreviation, this little mu symbol. It's a Greek symbol. It looks like a cursive U. Stands for like micro. And a micrometer is really small. In a single millimeter, those really small markings you see on our metric rulers, there are 1,000 micrometers in one single millimeter. So it's small. We use it when we're measuring small objects. So one micrometer is how much of a millimeter? 1,000. 1,000.001. Let's go back. Yeah, right. Copy from now. All right. So. If we are look, so we have, you can use a clear ruler. We're going to use graph paper to measure our field of view. And so if I'm looking at a clear ruler, and I, each of these lines is a millimeter, the numbered lines are millimeters, I can look at it through the microscope, and I can see sort of how wide the field of view is, what the diameter is of my field of view. What would the diameter of this field of view be on top? If I was looking at a ruler through the microscope. How many millimeters? Six. Six. Or how many micrometers? Six thousand. Six thousand. Well, the way we're going to measure the field of view is by looking at millimeter graph paper. Millimeter graph paper has lines that are exactly one millimeter apart. So if I look at a slide of millimeter graph paper on my microscope and see this, what's the diameter of my field of view on this? Five millimeters. Or? Five thousand. Five thousand micrometers. And then if I increase my magnification and I see this, what's my field of view now? My diameter of the field of view? More than one, isn't it? We see the line, so it's more than one. It's two? Is it? No. How much was left? You've got to kind of estimate a little bit. Like yeah, I'd say 1.2. Uh -huh. Or? 1,200. 1,200 microns. And once you measure your field of view in this way, like you will today, you can then estimate the size of objects that you're seeing under the microscope forevermore. And you do it sort of indirectly. So let's look at, look at this tree. Here's how we do it. If we imagine this tree is six meters tall, and Mr. A is standing here. How tall is he? Two, three, two. Well, how do you figure out? I would say about two. How did you figure that out? Estimation. Yeah, what would you say? Well, because half of six is three, so I have, if you like, right there, and since he's just a little bit Okay, you can estimate it like that. Or you might say, okay, Mr. A, if I could probably stack three of them on top of each other, that would probably reach the top of the tree. So it's six meters to the top divided by three. Tells me he's about two meters tall. So he's about one third the height of that tree. We can do the exact same procedure in the microscope. 
If I've measured my field of view and I know it's 10 millimeters across, how wide is this creature? Five. Yeah, I'd say about five. Two fit across, 10 divided by two is five. How about this creature? If my field of view is four millimeters, how big is this? One. So how many fit across? Four. four. Probably four. Four millimeters divided by four is one millimeter. Alright, I think you get the point, right? We don't need to do all the examples of that. Alright, let's um, start our lab. So you can put that away.